Competitive positioning is the complement on industry attractiveness in the structure of strategic thinking. So basically every time you are strategically thinking about your company or your industry, you have to take into consideration two areas, industry attractiveness and competitive positioning. So the attractiveness is basically how your industry can sustainably gain profit against the five forces that are working at the industry level. Uh, so you can refer uh, on this about um, the five forces framework that you can found in other videos of this series. Then uh, there is the second step of uh, the strategy to gain some success, that is the competitive positioning. Competitive positioning is how we position against our competitors. And in some way, uh, let's say that the industry structure is something that is not completely exogenous because acting in the competitive arena as a single company, you change the structure, but in the same way you gain some positioning. Therefore, positioning and industry structure is usually always acting in an interwined way. But if for a moment we keep stable uh, the industry attractiveness and we just look at the competitive positioning, we know that uh, your strategic decision can take the company to gain a competitive advantage. And basically the two competitive advantage or the two areas of competitive advantage you, you can have is lower cost than rivals. That does not mean lower prices, lower cost than rivals or the ability to differentiate your product, your service vis-a-vis -vis the other. So you will have at the end of the story a price that is higher than the one of your competitors or you will have at the same level of price, lower cost than your competitors. So positioning at the end of the story is taking strategic decision. And the essence of strategy is choice. Decide what to do. What do we mean for choice? The, the point is that if you want to have a strategic position, you should have taken some trade-off decision. Because if you can take that position without trading off, without renouncing to other position in the industry, then everybody can have the same position without any difference. So a strategic trade-off is something I decide to do that imply that I decide also not to do other things. So when you decide to compete in an industry, you can take many positions, the one that are best, uh, better aligned with your resources and so on and so forth. But the point is that uh, at the end, you will have to decide and you will have to clearly state what you are choosing not to do because of the fact that you are choosing to do something else. Uh, the example in the page is airline. You can do the low cost airline, but if you do the, the low cost airline, you cannot serve uh, meals or having uh, a lot of perks uh, on board or having a lot of services uh, uh, when you do the check-ins and so on. You must be a low cost company with bare bone operations. If you want to do the premium uh, airline company, you will have meals, you will have uh, business class, you will have uh, new and wonderful uh, uh, updated airplanes with uh, perfect furnitures and you're doing something else. You cannot do both. That's the idea that strategy means taking decisions. As a consequence here is that uh, when you have a position that is a strategic position, you will be able to command your position given your competitive advantage. So you can have higher prices or lower costs because of the position you chose in the past. So positioning and scope within the industry take us to the three generic strategy. 
Um, the three generic strategy are, uh, let's say, based on price or cost. So if you want to be a differentiating company, you want to position yourself as someone who is selling products that are different from the competition you are here. If you want to sell products that are similar to the competition, but your overall cost is lower, you will be here. Um, but in both cases, in the generic strategy, you will held this position towards the entire market. Focus is the same kind of strategy, but narrowed on segment, on one or more segments. So in that case, you will be the lower cost provider for a specific segment because you do something on big volumes, because you are near to that kind of customer, because you did some specific investments to serve a lower cost, that kind of customer and so on and so forth. Or you would be different, but just for that small amount of uh, uh, customer that are in the segment you want to, to serve. So at the end, you must have one of these strategic uh, position uh, and you must be always very, very, you must take care of the fact that you must have clear one of these strategy. Then you can elaborate on, on the strategy, have a better position vis-a-vis -vis competitors than maybe are having similar strategy within your industry, but you must be clear on that because if you are not, you will be, let's say, uh, uh, stuck in the middle. So you will be somewhere, let's say here doing different things and you will not get any positioning. And if you don't have any right and clear position, you will not have any above average return. So what do we mean for focus? Because being lower cost or differentiator is quite straight away, but probably we need to further read a bit more on Porter view about the focus. And here, the point is a matter of uh, to whom our competitive advantage has a value. If we have a value towards everyone, we can have a generic strategy. But probably there are cases in which our differentiation or our cost can be valuable only for some buyers in, in certain segments. So in that case, we have to better position ourselves against the generic strategy guys in our industry. And uh, here there is, uh, let's say, the, the, the first step of the disruptive innovation tier of Professor Christensen, because Porter himself say that sometimes in this finding the right group of buyers you can serve with a focused strategy, he spot the fact that usually generic strategy companies tend to overperform in uh, solving some needs. And therefore there, there is a place as then Professor Christensen then highlight, there is some space here in which you can enter lowering the overall cost of the production of the product and the service and lowering as well the price entering in the below area of the uh, market. So give a look on what is the competitive advantage because you can you have competitive advantage in the moment in which you take a positioning but you have to decide how to position yourself and to position yourself you have to work on your value chain. So you cannot understand, you cannot decide which is your competitive advantage just because you want to be positioned on premiumization. In the moment in which you decide or you are thinking about a position on the premium area of the market, you have to look at your value chain, value chain and disaggregate your activities within the value chain. So this is the reason why Porter proposed a very simple, in his words, very simple, a first, a first way of working on your activities in the way in which uh, you can check if there are required activities uh, required from your customer that you can uh, 
perform at a lower cost, you can position. So you can start to think about it, having a positioning on lower cost, or if there are some activities that you can, or you already are doing in a different way vis-a-vis -vis your competitors. So that's the first sign of having a, a potential positioning as a differentiated company. To understand your value chain, first of all, you have to put your value chain within the value system. What is the value system? Value system is the system or the uh, mega chain who is taking the value to the final customer, starting from suppliers, from raw materials. So from, from suppliers, we every step of the value system is adding some value to offer to the final customer a final product or a final service that has some added value for the customer. Every step of this chain is linked together with the other chains. So your suppliers are serving and are adding something to your value chain. And we refer to value chain of all the activities you are doing. And you're doing the same with uh, your distributors. For example, if you do just in time, if you are producing foods, uh, kind of foods you're doing just in time for your supermarkets clients, you are acting helping the value chain of the distributor that this overall this is lowering the cost of the supermarkets it's lowering the cost and is giving you price advantage to the final customer so every time you think at your value chain you must also try to understand which are the linkage between your value chain and other value chain within the value system and here you have the final most important value chain so you with all your activities here and your customer because also the final customer has a value chain and this is a, a figure that is been proposed by professor porter himself so the 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 the, the the authentic uh, uh, analysis of value chain from his uh, creator from his inventor is saying a hey, give a look to the fact that also the buyer has a value chain being a buyer a business or a customer a final consumer and so in, the point is that when you act with your activities on the activities of the buyer you are hiring the willingness to pay for your product from from the customer and this uh, in this sense you can command more value and take a part of that value in a term of uh, price so the value chain the base of the value chain is activities so for a small recap we start from positioning here Positioning means having a strategy. Strategy is made on cost of differentiation. Cost and differentiation have their sources in the value chain and in the value system. The value chain is made, uh, is made by activities. So what do we mean for an activity? An activity that is strategically relevant is an activity that has different economics vis-a-vis -vis the other activities in the company have an impact, a potential impact on differentiation or as a potential impact on cost. So these three elements help us in defining which is the chain that are grouping activities in our company. So in this case, Basically, what you have to do is ordering the activities you are doing in the company and categorizing them with these three steps in your value chain. And Porter himself is saying that, let's say there is a, a, a lot of ordering and judgmental analysis based on specific uh, company and specific value chain. Uh, so we can suppose that Porter wouldn't be surprised about the fact that maybe the value chain of your company is different from this one that uh, he uh, put on uh, on uh, on uh, on paper in in his book. Every activity is made out of drivers, so we have competitive positioning. Positioning is made of premiumness, price, or mm, low cost. 
these are coming from value system and value chains. Value chains is made of, of activities. Activities are measured with drivers. So the driver is the way in which we measure the activity. For example, uh, let's take the brand reputation. Brand reputation is an outcome, not a cause. Why a company is reputed by customer as a good brand? Why, little by little, over time, the company did something that is of value for the customer, and he repeat to do that. So he create a reputation of doing something useful for the customer. And probably he start to invest early in marketing, in advertising, say, I'm doing that for the customer. That's the value I'm doing. And little by little, this brand become, let's say, the brand that is promising that value, keeping that promise. If you think about the bears, the bears start to invest uh, in the idea that diamonds are forever and are good for engaging uh, and to get exposed. And, and for 50 years, they just say, this is the job to be done of your diamond. And so the job you can hire a diamond to do is to help you to ask your girlfriend to engage and uh, to marry you. And, and so um, little by little, the bears become the brand. Uh, and now probably there is a value in that because investing the same amount of money in marketing, the bears has higher impact than uh, maybe another competitor like let's say Tiffany or whatsoever. So the point is that you have to link from the driver measuring activities. You have to group activities to understand your value chain. And you have then to check your value chain within the value system and taking decision in that case, having clear your value chain and the value system, which is the position you want to have. And so you take, uh, let's say the strategic decision of being positioned in your industry and then the industry activities will be affected by your positioning as well. In this uh, way, you close the process of the industry uh, attractive in this competitive position uh, decisions that you have to make to take a strategic position within the industry.